Hi everyone, this is Sharon here. Welcome to my channel. In the last session, we saw about the fuzzy Aussie means algorithm. We saw about like uh, what it is. It is a uh, type of soft clustering. What is the benefit of using fuzzy C means algorithm? What are the various scenarios it can be used? Uh, with a simple example, we saw like how the implementation actually happens. We also saw the various steps involved in the algorithm. What are the what is the math uh, behind those steps? How do we calculate the distance and membership probability for each data point? If you have any questions about the first C, C means algorithm, go through my previous session. I will provide the link in the description so that you can understand what a C, C means algorithm is. So now in this session, what we are going to do is we are going to go through an implementation of a C, C means algorithm. So we are going to use an inbuilt package that is available in Python and we are going to see how to implement the C, C means algorithm. After the simple implementation, what we will be going through is we will be going through an example of image quantization. So where we try to reduce the number of unit in colors that is present in an image. Why we do so? Like we do that in order to reduce the number of unit colors and hence uh, it becomes easy for us to like, do a higher level of compression on the images without losing any useful information. So image quantization technique is very useful if you are working on a lot of image data. So you would be able to compress the image to a higher extent without losing any useful information. So let's first go through this simple example and then see how to uh, use the fuzzy C means algorithm. So as you see on my screen, the packages or library first we would need to use is NumPy, Pandas. If your data is, uh, is present as a CSV file like Pandas, and uh, this is the package like uh, FC means which implements the fuzzy C means algorithm. And we use the matplot library in order to make the plot to understand like the different uh, clusters that has been uh, identified and so. So first what we will do is we will execute this, import all the required packages uh, to uh, implement the fuzzy C means algorithm. Now what we are going to do is as you see on my screen here, we are going to create and sample data set. So there are going to be four attributes. These are all the various ranges of those attributes. And uh, uh, let me execute this and then show you how the data point looks uh, using a simple plot. So this is how the data point looks like. So these are all the various uh, data point and we can clearly see there are four different clusters here. But let's see how the fuzzy C means algorithm uh, would work in these scenarios. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create, like we are going to initiate the fuzzy C means algorithm and we are going to pass the number of clusters as two. And what we do is we use the fit functionality and the H is the data set that we have here. So this is the data set, the, uh, the data array that we have is H. So we use fit functionality in order to fit the data point and then identify the various cluster. So let me execute this. So once the execution is complete, then let's identify what are all the cluster centers and the various labels. So now the cluster centers are present in this particular uh, variable. So let's see what it is. So as you see, we have got two different cluster centers and uh, this is the data point of those cluster centers. And uh, let's identify the unit labels. So that should be two labels. So as we see, there are two labels, letter like zero and one. And there are two clusters identified from the data set. Uh, so then next one is we are going to plot the results and then see how the clusters are looking. So this is the original data set on the left hand side. And uh, when we pass on the number of clusters as two, so this is how the data uh, output looks like. So it has identified these data point as uh, one cluster and these data points are other cluster. So the H here is the cluster center for this particular cluster. And there would be a cluster center here as well. So next what we do is we want to understand um, like uh, what is the ideal cluster. So what we do is I have created an array which has uh, like a value two to seven. What we are going to do is we are going to iterate through the data set. We are going to try out a different number of clusters and then see which one is looking better. So let me execute this. And uh, once uh, once this is done, so what it, what it is happening is it is executing, uh, it is finding like uh, the clusters that are, uh, it is finding the clusters for each data point for all these scenarios. So once, once that is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the setting portion uh, to identify, uh, to get the image, like the plot for each of those scenarios. So what happens when the number of clusters is two? What happens in three, four, five, six, and seven? 
So now, as you see here, so this is the scenario where we have uh, two clusters. So these are all the cluster centers. When we have three clusters, these two categories are uh, considered as two separate clusters and uh, these, this particular data set here is still considered mostly as the third cluster. So what we can see is we, as the number of clusters increases, we can see the PZ value also increasing from 0.735, it increases to 0.8 and the PZ value is decreasing. So as we, uh, as we go through, what happens is at four, when we have four clusters, the PZ value seems to be highest and the PZ value seems to be the lowest. So that is the objective. We want to increase the uh, increase the PC value and we want to reduce the PEZ value. So when we have four clusters, so this seems to be the most optimal value. And after and, and again, when we go to the fifth cluster, what happens is the PC value starts de decreasing and the PEZ value starts increasing. So which is not suitable. And hence, from this, what happens is it becomes very clear that uh, this particular data set, four clusters is the ideal value. It is, it is not exactly uh, a quickest way to identify the ideal number of clusters if we have really a huge data set and with a lot of uh, overlapping data points this might be tricky like uh, this might be tricky like uh, this uh, step of identifying the ideal number of clusters would become a time consuming process because like it needs to it needs to execute uh, like end to end for each clusters and it needs to identify those values and uh, and when we have n number of values, then this process needs to continue for some time. And it might, might not be the most optimal way, but uh, this it's, uh, exactly it helps us to know like, what should be the ideal number of clusters. So that's it uh, on the simple example here. So now what we will go is we will go through the second example of image quantization. Um, so all this all the script that I'm using here are part of the example scripts that is available in the particular package. So this is the fuzzy C means algorithm. Like right, it, this particular link holds the information about this particular package, like how to use it. And the scripts that I'm using today are provided as examples in this particular uh, library. And hence, feel free to go through it. Feel free to let download uh, from either either the Git repository that I have mentioned here or directly from uh, the Git repository that I have, which I use for learning data science in 100 days. All the scripts and data, data sets that are used in this particular learning series will be available in my Git repository. The link to the Git repository is provided in the description. So feel free to download and uh, try the examples by uh, yourself. So here, this is the example for image quantization. So as I explained, uh, so what happens is the objective is to reduce the number of unit colors that is present in an image. So let's uh, uh, let's import all the packages that is required. So after importing all the packages that is required, we need to uh, read the image. So this image that you see here is uh, taken from the Unsplash and this is the link to the image on Unsplash and feel free to download the same image or try with a different set of images. So this particular image is uh, uh, quite high resolution. It has a lot of color in it, as you see. It has a lot of information. It has various uh, items in the background. It has so many trees, like it has various vehicles, and uh, it has uh, so much of detailed information. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to see how to use image, how to use like for CC means algorithm for image quantization to reduce the number of unit colors and and how the actual output looks like. Is it still relevant to the original image? Does it still hold all the information? We are going to see it. So what, first what we are going to do is we are going to open the image and read the image. After reading the image, we are going to convert the transform the image into data sets. Uh, we will be reshaping that into an array. Each of the data points will have three values, like a one for R, G, and B that uniquely identify each color for each pixel. So now let me execute this and uh, we are going to use the uh, fuzzy c means algorithm what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass the number of clusters as 10 and uh, so now uh, since this is uh, complete so then what we do is we use the pixel quantization we identify for each pixel what is the closest cluster center that is present to present so let's execute this and identify for each pixel each data point that is present what is the closest cluster center. So once that is done, what we do is we start transforming the uh, data. 
So what we do is we identify based on the cluster center as well as based on the probability, we try to like replace the color, uh, the original color with the new one, which is based on these 10 different clusters. So now let me execute it and uh, we are going to regenerate the image and then going to save the image in this particular location. And uh, once that is done, so by displaying like uh, this particular command here helps to display the image like original as well as the new image side by side. So as you see here, uh, this is the original image on the left hand side. Uh, this is the, uh, the new image on the right hand side. As you see, we are able to withhold all the information that is present in the uh, image and we are able to reduce the unit colors that is present in the image as well. So now what happens is when we uh, compress the image on the right hand side, we would be able to compress into a uh, uh, much more larger extent. And hence it becomes very useful for image classification problem where you would have thousands or even millions of images. And if you are going to use the original image as it is, it might be uh, time consuming. Uh, because the images would be of a larger file size. So what we can do is we can use image quantization and then we can compress the image afterwards and hence it allows uh, a larger compression. If you have any resource crunches, what you can do is you can make use of this particular technique in order to compress the images into a larger extent and uh, still continue to uh, work on the image classification. So that's it for today. I hope you have learned something new about the fuzzy C means algorithm. In the previous session, we saw about this algorithm. Uh, we saw the math behind the algorithm, the various scenarios where it can be implemented, a simple example with one dimensional data and the various tips that is involved in the implementation of this particular algorithm. In today's session, we have gone through a simple example of uh, clustering using the fuzzy C-means algorithm. And we have also um, gone through the use of this algorithm in, in image quantization. And that's it for now. If you like what I'm doing here, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you know anyone who is trying to learn data science, please share this series with them. And uh, that's it for now. See you in next session with another topic. Bye until then.